So if you click apply and then press, press OK, you already have set up your project. So we're going to bring in a clip here from one of the games that I used to play, Kingdom Hearts. Uh, it's going to be the introduction. Uh, let's see, pull this up here. There we go. So that's going to render out. When you first pull in the video itself, bear in mind that it will probably, if it does have audio, uh, it's going to build the peaks first. So you're going to see a little loading bar at the bottom here that says um, building the peaks. Don't worry, it's just going to load up the video file so you can see the wave formats there. Uh, this is in stereo as well. So you have your video here. Um, I'm going to lower this here because of the fact is that I don't want to overflow the actual sound here. But, uh, so you see, that's, that's pretty smooth. Um, first and foremost, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually bring this over to here. Okay, so, first and foremost, when editing a video, what you want to do is these black bars. You need to remove the black bars, because otherwise it looks like a fucking, just, it looks bad. It looks really bad. So, in order to do that, what I personally do, especially with videos like this, whereas it's sort of widescreen, but not really, is I click on this little icon over here, it's the crop and pan tool, and it brings up this video, or this, um, this window. So you can open the, open this video up here, and then if you right click on the video itself, it says match output aspect, which basically, uh, sets the, the, the crop to the project. So when you do that, it pulls it out to the pot. Um, so it makes it so that the actual window itself, it fills up the window. Um, you can also click and drag it slightly so that it doesn't have any black bars around the edges or anything like that. Uh, you can move this around if you wanted to. Uh, you can even do this if you wanted to. But for the sake of video here, I'm just gonna do it like this and then click and drag it a little bit there. Oh, and one other thing before I, uh, before I continue on with the video there, I do want to mention something that I forgot to mention prior to this. Now, I am already working on the, the After Effect because I ended up actually looking through the video and I looked over it and I found that it is actually quite, uh, quite an important detail. You'll notice that during this video that the actual video file itself is only running at a total of 1838 by 992. That's what it was recorded at. So in order to fix that, what I mentioned in the video was that if you click on match outs, put output aspect, uh, it'll cut off the edges themselves and it'll make it so that it's as if you are running at 16 by 9. However, if you don't want to do that and you want to be able to stretch it out, bear in mind you might create a fat face effect, whereas it'll, it might, it'll stretch out to whatever extent it has to. But there is an option here. If you go to this window here and you click on maintain aspect ratio and you click on no, it'll stretch out to the project's ratio. So this will basically mean that it'll be doing this. It'll go from edge to edge to edge. I don't know if you can actually see that, but that's the gist of that. I wanted to throw that in there as well because I did want to let you guys know that you can also do that if you wanted to. Not, not recommended, but you can if you, if you really wanted to. All right, guys, back to the video. That's that there, that's pretty simple. You can also mask if you wanted to as well, so you can like, you can only you, you can do that like that. That's not a perfect circle, but I don't really care. You do that. I'm not going to do any masking though, because that takes a very 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 long time. Uh, you can also go ahead and do. You could also do this. So I mean, if you click on this, the lock aspect ratio basically means that you can adjust the frame size freely like this and freely like this. Um. Alternatively as well, what you could do is this here, which is a size about the center, which basically means that it basically takes whatever center point there is. So uh, by clicking and dragging the left side, it, the center point's on the right, etc, etc, etc. If you had this on, it basically means that all the center points are literally the center here. Like this center right here. So... That's pretty simple there. Um, again, you can rotate it if you want. Uh, you can adjust the size of it as well. There's also a snapping tool if you want to make it so that it's part of the grid, uh, which basically means it'll snap to the whatever grid point that's there, which is also very useful that I use personally. 
Um, something I tend to do a lot as well is, especially with videos like this where the quality isn't, you know, perfect, um, the video itself can be sharpened as well. Underneath the video effects tab there, under almost all the Sony Vegas versions, uh, there's a sharpen tool there. I do also have alternative ones as well, like the uh, Hit Film and... There's a, there's a few here that aren't a part of regular Vegas because I have Vegas Pro 14. Um, but yeah. So you have default, medium, light, and heavy. Default does medium. So light, medium, and heavy. You can click and drag it onto the video or the video track. I personally tend to do it on the video track to make sure that anything that's on the video track will be sharpened um, instead of having it just set to the one video. Alternatively as well, what I do also do is I like to pull the video itself, uh, like pull the video and kind of add to it a little bit. Uh, what I do is something I mentioned earlier is the pixel format, 32-bit versus 8-bit. 32-bit floating point video levels only um, only take the the pixel aspect ratio, like the pixel format here, and match it to the 32-bit and it doesn't add anything to the video itself so if I do this and I hit apply you'll see that nothing has really changed it's slightly different but not too too different there um, alternatively you also have the full range which basically emphasizes on all of the um, brightness the contrast the color itself so you can see that here that we we'll use this is this here is an example uh, there's a lot of um, yellow uh, blue, there's some green in there too. You can see some green on the side and on the arm. Uh, if I were to take the full range out and I would just do 8-bit again, you'll see that the it's very w slightly washed out. Uh, the blue didn't really change, um, but the, the aspect itself, the quality itself did actually slightly improve. There is really, again, no difference between 32 and 8. Uh, but the full range and the 8-bit is what really sets off the the two different versions. Especially with this, whereas it, you can transform it to this, this, you can turn it off. Um, you, there's, it basically enables more settings if you choose to do so. That is just but ugly. But let's move on from there. Uh, we'll switch this all back. I'll just leave it on 32-bit for now. Um, Something I personally do, as I mentioned earlier, is that I do manual adjustments. Uh, I have a, sp a certain setting here called Saturation Luminous Boost 2, which is a modified version of the original inputted one. If I click and drag this onto the... V we'll do it on the video track here. You'll see that the colors are more bumped out. There's not really any pixelation errors on the arms or anything like that. And you'll see that it's, it is slightly brighter than what, um, what it initially was. Settings themselves, very simple. I didn't adjust the actual hue itself. I didn't adjust the uh, hex value for it. Saturation is 1.5, so it's 150% uh, of what it was. And then luminous is uh, 0 0.0, anywhere between what I would recommend, 0.05 to 0 0.09. I have it on 0 0.088 because that's what I find to be the best, at least for some, most of my videos. And... Usually, sometimes, sometimes, I should say, the, some things that I end up doing are, there is a glow effect as well in this. Um, I have a specific setting called Gentle Glow, which if I add, throw this on here, it adds like a smoothness of some sort to the actual video file itself. You'll see that it's, it's, it's a little blurrier, yes, I'll mind, I'll, I'll mind that, but it is a little blurrier, but it's, it seems to be a little better quality. If you've watched my recent video in terms of Advent Children, again, there was some MP4 issues originally in that video that I couldn't fix. But in this, what you'll see is that um, this is the effect that I kind of used in that I added some, I added a boost to the brightness, the color, and the actual overall quality of the video itself to avoid any pixelation errors that I might have succumbed to, things like that. This is the effect that I used. It's a very simple effect, and I personally do that if I'm doing video edits, edits or if I'm trying to emphasize on the video itself whenever I'm doing fan dubs. I wouldn't do it on gaming videos, but this is something I would do on video editing and voice acting. 
you can adjust it if you wanted to. You can adjust the levels themselves. You can even adjust the color if you wanted to. Uh, so if you like, oh, it's um, it's becoming nighttime. So you'll you can do it like that, and it'll make it look like it's sort of nighttime. But overall, I wouldn't do like black because it's just kind of shoddy looking. Yeah, that's the that's what I usually end up doing. So you'll see that there's a bit of a quality difference there. Now. I might be able to show you this here. So you'll see underneath this video, use project resample mode, which technically should be disabled. I don't know why it isn't, but it should be. Now, if you'll see here, between the last frame and the, the next frame, you'll see that there is a bit of a, a bit of a, a bit of a, I should say, like a fade effect between the frames, if I were to disable this mode altogether and disable the resample, what would normally happen in that case scenario is that it would just go straight, It would, there would be no additional like lines here, but this is obviously pre-rendered, so it's this is the way it works, this is how it looks, but none of this would be, this would just be a standard sharp sharp effect but this is obviously part of the video itself this is all pre-rendered yeah you know, see so it's basically a version of motion blur that they have i disable it that's just something i personally do but regardless of that that's the basis of what you can do in terms of video editing there's not really much else you can do you'll see that there is a bit of a the effect itself is there as well. It's quite... It's not the best quality clip that I could have used, but... Regardless of that, I just want to get this out because I've already recorded this once and it's already gone, so that's fun. And, anyways. Moving on, what I also do in terms of any video that I post is I tend to emphasize on certain... The, I emphasize on the audio as well. I, I emphasize on the video, now I emphasize on the audio. So if I click on the track effects right here on the audio section, uh, you'll, see be, you'll see three different sections. The noise gate, the track EQ, and the compressor. Compressor itself you can relatively leave alone unless you want to up some of the information here. What I, I have a specific setting called the vocal track EQ which basically emphasizes the bass and the sharpness of my vocals and kind of off-puts some of the background noise slightly. Now, something I, something you won't see on here, it's also in here, is the track noise gate. If you click and drag this onto either the track itself or up here, you'll be presented with this. I also have a setting called remove background noise, which sometimes there is some background noise that I have that I don't really like to catch in Audacity because Audacity, the quality on Audacity greatly suffers if I do that. So I do it in here and I tweak it to my own personal preference. But this is where I base it off of. The attack time is three, the release time is 300, and the threshold itself is usually set to 40.4 or negative 40.4. Basically, that allows um, any background noise, like um, like a hissing sound or anything like that, to be pulled from the audio itself, and you'll just be presented with the standard, the standard video itself or the standard audio. You can also uh, adjust the volume and the left and right sections. Now, something that I want to show you is that these are the settings for track uh, the track EQ itself, the equalizer, um, low shelf. Frequency 177, 9.1, and 6 for number 1. 2 is disabled altogether. 3, I uh, just moved it. 3 itself uh, is set to uh, band. Um, 3884 for the frequency. The gain is negative 11.7, and the bandwidth is 1. Uh, and number 4 is similar, so it's 8000, 6, and 6, uh, and it's under high shelf. Which basically means it's, um, this is the sharpness, this is the base, and this just kind of removes some of the hollowness out of it, or, yeah, I guess you'd call it the hollowness. Uh, this is the way I have it set up, and this is usually, generally speaking, what I use for any vocals, and sometimes music, depending on if I want to boost the base. 
So, moving on from there, uh, what you can do is, so if you just do some edits here, we'll do this, this, and we'll do that, and we'll do that. So, we'll do that. Um, so, you've done your edit, you've done your adjustments, you've done the general consensus of what you want to do. Uh, you'll be presented with something similar to this. As I said, I usually have it that way to... Give me that for a second. I usually have it set to preview uh, just so that I can have the ability to edit it first and then if I want to check the quality out at the end, I would just do best full. Um, usually speaking, that's only if I want to check out to make sure that like a masking is done properly and such. So if I were to open this back up, so this is what it sounds like regularly. That's generally what it sounds like and the difference it is, and you'll see that there is a bit of a uh, more not so subtle tone towards the bass itself but that's how it usually sounds and if i were to render this out you'll you'll notice that the the quality itself the quality itself is not that great obviously because it's kingdom hearts one but you'll notice that the quality itself doesn't really suffer compared to what's in the project and what's in the file itself 